So you play with soap bubbles. Films are like uh, non-closed versions of those. Um, so it's, it's simply a thin, fil a thin film of soapy water um, stretched across some kind of contour. Uh, and here's kind of a nice picture. You have a, a pyramid that's been dipped in soap, um, and it forms this kind of nice surface. And they're kind of complicated, so you can imagine the mathematics of describing how you get these surfaces probably isn't so easy. Um, but what about the physical side? Um, so for example, if you've dipped a wireframe in water, you don't get a bubble. Um, so why do you get bubbles in uh, soap films as opposed to just regular water? Well, um, it's based on something called the Marangoni effect, um, which says that if there's, uh, in the presence of some kind of surface tension gradient, um, liquids will move from points of uh, low surface tension to high surface tension. Um, and this is kind of demonstrated nicely in uh, wine glasses. So this afternoon at our wine and cheese party, you can all see a, a nice demonstration of uh, the Marangoni effect. And it's because alcohol has much lower surface tension than water. So when it, uh, once you've lifted up your glass, the, uh, the water will kind of bead together. Um, and that's why you get these tears. Um, of course, there are many nice pictures of this on the internet. So, <laughs> um, so in fact, so, soapy water has uh, lower surface tension than regular water. So um, the soap actually acts to stabilize your solution. Um, or, or your film, because whenever the film stretches, the concentration of soap will decrease, which actually increases the surface tension. Um, so it kind of selectively um, strengthens the material in spots where it's weakened, um, but not so much that it uh, won't form a film. Because the reason water won't film uh, is because the surface tension is just too high to support, uh, I guess, strain in that direction. So that's neat. Um, so but how, that, that only tells us that we get soap bubbles. Um, how do we know what kind of shape they take? I mean, soap could do anything. It could form giant spiky things. It could, who knows? Um, so for at least soap bubbles in equilibrium, um, the potential energy is really easy. Um, it's just the surface tension times the, uh, the surface area of the object, um, which is kind of obvious if you think about it. The surface tension is kind of the amount of um, energy it takes to deform the surface kind of by an infinitesimal amount by poking it. So if you multiply that infinitesimal amount by the whole surface, you get kind of the whole potential energy. So nature likes to minimize potentials. Um, so soap films will actually minimize the surface, ten surface area for a given surface tension, which is kind of determined by the solution. So now, now we go on to the, uh, the mathematics. Um, so I'll have a very simple working definition of a surface. It's exactly what you think. You're in R3, you take some domain in the plane, and you define a surface by how high it is above the domain. Um, more generally, you could work with parametric surfaces, which you probably all did in vector calculus or something like that. Um, but that's just too messy, and it's not, it's not <coughs> instructive to do it. Um, so then the area of a surface, um, you simply integrate around the domain uh, of this kind of area element, which you probably also have seen in your, your uh, vector calculus courses. So now we, we somehow want to minimize this surface area. And like, just to go back, this depends on the function u, which describes the surface. So this looks like a, something you might want to use calculus of variations on. You vary u by a small amount. How much does the area change? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, so you actually want to minimize given a certain set of boundary conditions. Because if you have a soap bubble, you have a wire frame. Um, and the soap bubble will stretch across the wire frame. So that kind of fixes the height function u on the boundary. Um, so that gives you your boundary conditions on the boundary of your domain. Um, and then the, the actual shape of the soap film um, is the surface given by the function u that minimizes the area um, given your boundary condition. So if you uh, apply calculus of variations and all that fun stuff, um, it's actually the same as you always do, as apparently is true in calculus of variations. You get this equation. Um, it's a Messy, nonlinear, second order PDE. Don't know how you solve it. Uh, <laughs> absolutely no idea. I'm sure people just try to guess clever solutions or something. There might be some techniques, but it's not. It's certainly not a nice, amenable one. It's not a wave equation. You can't. You know, there's no. There's no simple way of solving it. Um, but at least you have an equation. Um, however, people usually approach it in a different way. Um, so they go about something called minimal surfaces. Um, and to define a, a lot of minimal surfaces, we have to talk about curvature. So um, if you take a surface, uh, you can define something called the mean curvature, which is the average of the two principal curvatures. And I don't know if you've, 
this is in, I guess, kind of classical differential geometry, but uh, the principal curvatures are if you imagine uh, taking your normal to your plane at that point, and then taking all the planes that intersect the normal. So you have a surface, sorry. You take the normal um, vector to the surface, you take all the planes that intersect that surface, um, then look at the curvature of the curves of the intersection of the plane and the, and the surface. Um, so another way, if you just think of all curves in the surface that pass through um, the, your given point and work out their uh, curvatures, so their second derivatives, um, the, the principal curvatures are the biggest one and the smallest one. Um, and then you just take the average of those two and you get the mean curvature. Um, so then a surface that has uh, zero mean curvature at every point is called a minimal surface. Um, to get an intuition of what that's like, um, if you think of a, um, you know, the standard kind of like hyperboloid or like the saddle point, um, that'll have positive curvature in one direction and negative curvature in the other direction. Um, and if it curves this way as much as it curves this way, then it has zero minimal curvature. Um, so it's kind of, it's a surface that is like a hyperboloid at each point. Um, so locally it kind of looks like a saddle point, but then you know, globally it can look like whatever. So if you just, um, so you can define these, you can find these principal curvatures as like eigenvalues of some shape operator. If you go through all that process, then you actually get this for the formula for the minimal curvature. And I don't know if you have a good memory, but that's the same as this one. Uh, so in fact, it turns out that for surfaces defined this way, um, minimizing surface area is exactly the same as minimizing curvature, or um, having zero mean curvature, which is also kind of intuitive because um, you imagine if the mean curvature wasn't zero, then it bulges one way more than in the other. So you could kind of deform it back a little and get something that's actually less area. Um, so, and I guess people prefer to work with the definition of minimal surface because they can do more geometric things as opposed to just having some horrible integral that they have to, to handle. Um, so, now some, some simple examples of... Um, Minimal surfaces. Um, this one's called the Shirk surface. Um, so some of these range from very physical to absolutely not. Um, but the Shirk surface is pretty physical. You imagine if you have um, take a square domain, um, and you have so sort of you have these boundary conditions. Uh, on the y sides of the boundary, it's negative one, but on the x sides of the boundary, it's one. So it's kind of like a I don't know. <laughs> you, you you can get the picture. Um, if it's fixed there, then this is the surface that kind of, uh, that's the soap bubble you would get. Though you notice these edges aren't rigid, it's because the boundary conditions are only defined in the limit. So plotting it on Mathematica, you don't get tight squares, you get, you know. Um, the catenoid, um, which is if you take two, uh, two parallel circles and dip them in soap and then slowly pull them apart, you'll get a surface like this. You also get the helicoid. So if you take a helix, dip it in water, you'll get a uh, helicoid. And so, as a quick summary, um, soap, uh, adding soap to water acts like a, as a stabilizing force so that you can actually form films. Um, the shape taken by the films to minimize potential air, uh, energy minimizes surface area, um, which is in fact equivalent to having zero mean curvature. So soap films are minimal surfaces. Thank you. I understood your definition right in that a spherical bubble, for example, is not a minimal surface. It's also not a soap film. Uh, so that's the, the trick. Um, because uh, so a soap film will have um, even pressure on both sides, which is why they minimize curvature. Um, a bubble actually has higher pressure inside than it does outside. Maybe the other way around. There's a pressure difference. Um, so in fact, soap bubbles are surface of constant mean curvature, which you know because they're spheres. Um, so they're slightly different, and I think actually harder to do mathematically, but there's only like one solution. Because, well, there's like two. What has constant curvature? Like a sphere and a uh, pseudosphere, and I'm pretty sure pseudospheres don't happen. <laughs> so, so it's, they're, yeah, they're a different, they're a different beast altogether. <laughs>